Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. So in this video, we'll be discussing about downstream processing. So we'll just start off from where we left in the last video. So let's get started with this video. So we'll start off with centrifugation today now. So we talked about the recovery and the purification process. We talked about filtration in my last video. We derived the root equation as well under filtration. And I left you out with a numerical. So today we'll start off with centrifugation. So talking about the basic principles related to centrifugation, as you can see, the basic principle or the idea of centrifugation is to separate the particles from a liquid. All right. So basically it uh, involves the separation of denser or heavier particles from the liquid. So the size ranges can be from 100 to 0.1 nanometers. Also, it has it works under the centrifugal forces and also under the gravitation forces. So it involves the uh, involvement of two forces, which is centrifugal forces and gravitation forces to maintain the balance between the plates. And this uh, another point that we have is the hindered settling. So it, the, in this, the part, uh, particle settling in a high particle density suspension. So due to density difference, these particles get shifted as the heavier particles get settled down and form a pellet, whereas the lighter particles or the liquid above get suspended in the suspension. So let's talk about the major forces involved in the centrifugal, in the process of centrifugation, which is the gravitational force we just studied right now, which is the one of the which is the drag force and another force is the buoyant force. So we'll all uh, we'll just uh, derive an equation out of these three forces and how these three can be correlated with each other. So another thing that we have in centrifugation is the terminal setting velocity. So what is terminal settling velocity? So basically at a particular speed, as you can see, the drag force of resistance Ft with buoyancy Fb will be equivalent to gravitational force Fg on the object so at this point the object ceases to accelerate and continues falling at a constant speed so in this case the fg will be equal to fp plus fd so the drag force of resistance so the drag force plus the buoyancy will be equal to the gravitational force uh, so basically it will help for a constant rotational activity so that these uh, material or the particles can be separated from each other we are depending on the sizes and with this so here we come to the derivation of the centrifugation so we just studied now that fg equals to fd plus fb so when net force is zero so the ultimately this all thing gets cancelled out when fg is equals to fd plus fb so the net force is here equals to zero so it can be further written as so fg fg can be derived further as so fg can be elaborated as pi by 6 d cube p uh, this is uh, density p by g by gc also same same thing fb can be illustrated as this thing pi by 6 d3 pf so all remain the same just the uh, name changes so here density is p here is density is represented as f and here we have u square 0a so here fd can be illustrated as this so these all three terms are present uh, in this so after we have got this so these can be further illustrated as these three equations as you can see or these three terms so these are more or less, more or less the same so moving on with so out of all of these fg which is which was the first term so fg equals to fd plus fb so in this fg can fg is the gravitational force as we know and the other two were the buoyant force and the drag force so the uh, uh, so the gravitational force which is represented by fg can, is represented by this so we just studied about that thing right now so simply fg can be represented as this whereas drag force can be represented and buoyant force can be represented by the two equations that we studied right now so talking about more what these terms mean to us so here we have some of the explanation here. So this was about the gravitational force. We'll discuss about the other two as well. So that was a simple, pretty simple equation of uh, how gravitational force is related to drag force and buoyant force. 
so we'll just elaborate the terms which are present in that all right so in this on this dp so this dp is uh, related to diameter of particle all right so this density dp so p here represents the particle or the density of the particle and g represents the acceleration due to gravity and gc represents the acceleration due to centrifugal force so gc here is the acceleration due to centrifugal force and this is the normal gravity this is the density of the particle uh, this is the diameter of the particle big t and small this thing is the density of the particle so this is very simple as you can see so moving so coming to the bion force we just studied about three equations out of which we have done the uh, gravitation force so again coming to bion force which is very much similar so in this uh, dp remains the same which is the diameter of the particle here we have density which is represented by f so which is density of the fluid so bion force definitely acts on the fluid so that's why we have f so this is the density of the fluid and g and gc remains the same in which gc is the gravity and gc is the acceleration due to centrifugal force all right so moving on so talking about the drag force so it is a bit different from the other two all right so in this uh, this is represented by cd by 2gc a density f u square uh, u0 square and into a so cd represents the drag coefficient all right so with which with which it pulls or rotates in this in a circular motion so cd is the drag coefficient all right so which will be given for you in the question whenever you need to solve a numerical for this and here density f is give, uh, given as the density of the fluid as same as the buoyant force so density remains the same u0 is the relative velocity between the fluid and the particle or the terminal velocity of a uh, particle so which can you so u0 here which is u0 square so u0 is represented as terminal velocity of the particle or relative velocity between the fluid and the particle and gc remains the same gc is the acceleration due to centrifugal force and here a is the cross sectional area of the particle perpendicular to the direction of fluid flow for a sphere uh, so uh, so a is the cross sectional area for uh, also for a sphere it's given uh, for elaborated further so definitely it's uh, always a spe spear only so for spear we have pi by 4 uh, dp square so this is how it looks like so this is a simple uh, derivation of drag force as well so moving on with this so let's just talk about the principles so we have moved from centrifugation now so we just talked about centrifugation centrifugation is a simple process that involves the that basically involves three forces which is the gravitational force, the buoyant force, and the drag force. All right. So, and also uh, the centrifugal force. So, all of these three combine the centrifugal force for centrifugation. So, talking about the next process, which is coagulation and flocculation. So, this is another important process, uh, process, and this is the third step for the downstream processing or purification process in this subject. So, talking about coagulation and flocculation. So these are these have some of the important principles as you can see. So some of the important principles here are cell aggregation. So cell aggregation is very important. So this is under which these two uh, processes take place. So coagulation and flocculation both have a similar meaning, but they have minor changes or differences between the two. So basically these involve the cell aggregation or uh, accumulation or cells getting binded or a lot of cells getting accumulated at a place or getting aggregated at a place all right so coagulation is the formation of small flocks so coagulation leads to formation of small bundles of cells or small col uh, colonies of cells all right so coagulating agents are electrolytes all right so coagulating agents can be electrolytes which have examples such as acids can be acids bases salts multivalent ions fine solid particles such as clay activated carbon or silica and flocculation is for basically the agglomeration of these small flocks into larger settable particles so these flocculation is a larger form of coagulation so coagulation leads to formation of small colonies whereas flocculation is basically combination of those colonies into a large one all right so combination or agglomeration of these small flocks into a large settable particle all right so basically is combined to form a 
large particles so that it settles down at the bottom so it's so basically it becomes easy for any sort of purification the these particles get combined together so that these become heavier and thus settle down so these cannot be done on its own so there are agents flocculating agents and coagulating agents so for coagulants we have electrolytes which can be these sort of substances and for flocculating agents we have poly electrolytes all right so there yeah, so for coagulation we have electrolytes and for flocculation we have poly electrolytes so some of the examples of poly electrolytes can be or some of the features can be uh, which needs to fulfill for flocculation is it should be high molecular weight it should uh, be water soluble organic compounds uh, which can either be ionic cationic or non ionic so these are some of the steps or features for polyelectrolytes which can act as flocculating agents so moving on with this so as you can see this is a simple picture of uh, some of the charges how it works and how it does not so basically as you can see for charge neutralization this is sweep copulation this is bridging this is patch for flocculation so charge neutralization is basically nothing but uh, this is a positive charge this is a negative charge these get these interact in a solution or of uh, basically in something so that uh, these two interact and thus lead to formation of flux because these negative and positive charge interact with each other uh, interact with each other and thus they attract to each other and thus form flux or small flux so uh, leading to coagulation so as you can see in this sweep coagulation so there are a lot of positive charge which are added in the form of electrolytes and these are some of the substances that are present in the medium so these two interact in the medium in the vessel and these form flocks as you can see so this is another method known as bridging so these uh, leads to addition of some of other electrolytes and these combine to form another set of flocks small flocks and this is a sort of a patch flocculation so these leads to so in this addition of poly electrolytes take place so which basically combines to which combines with the all of the other or negative or the opposite charge particles in the fluid medium to interact and form, form some sort of flocks a larger sort of a larger flocks so that they get heavier and they settle down easily one with this so this is the last part for this video so there are some of the agents as you can see which is the most important part so this one i have got from schuler and kagger so you can just get the reference from there as well so i got this from there so i found this very useful because there are some of the important agents as you can see polyelectrolytes anionic polyelectrolytes uh, polystyrene sulfate polyacrylamide cationic polyelectrolytes so these uh, the list goes on um, these have some of the important stuff such as glucose broth this 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 things and thus these carry out flocculant uh, flocculation and coagulation so these are some of the doses that are involved or some of the important uh, uh, amounts or um, uh, the important quantities that must be poured into the solution for glucose broth we have 0.2 percent polystyrene to be poly uh, polystyrene sulfate to be poured in and hydrocarbon we have 0.1 percent these have some of the important quantities that must be present in these amounts so that the work gets done so let's just keep this video till here if you have any doubts for this video you may type your doubts in the comment section i'll definitely help you out so stay tuned for more and thank you for watching this video